In this lesson, we will look at algebraic expressions and formulas. Now first, we're going to start with the idea of an expression. An expression is just a mathematical operation that's described through numbers, symbols, and operations. And one thing that we're going to take note of is in an expression, there is no equal sign. It's just a single mathematical statement. And this expression can be evaluated at different x values. So in our first example, we have the expression 8 plus 6 all times x minus 3 squared. And we're asked to evaluate that at x equals 13. So what that means is everywhere there was an x in the expression, we're now going to replace it with 13. So if we wrote that out, we would get 8 plus 6 times 13 minus 3 squared. As we simplify this, we need to think of our order of operation parentheses, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. That tells us that we deal with what's inside the parentheses first, so we're first going to subtract 13 from 3 from 13 and we get 10. Next it says deal with exponents, so 10 squared is 100, so we'd have 8 plus 6 times 100. Then we deal with multiplication, 6 times 100 is 600. Finally, we add, and we would get the value 8, sorry, 608 would be our final answer. So that's the expression evaluated at 13. So you substitute for every x value there is, and then simplify using the order of operations. Let's take a moment to evaluate the next expression. I recommend you would pause the video at this moment, work through this example, and then unpause to check your work. Now here we're asked to evaluate the expression when x takes on the value negative 5. So everywhere there was an x, I'm now going to replace that with negative 5. So we have negative 5 squared. Here the parentheses are important because this is saying all of negative 5 squared. That would be negative 5 times negative 5 plus 4 times negative 5 minus 7. Now we get to the order of operations. We are going to deal with exponents first. Negative 5 squared is 25 plus 4 times negative 5 minus 7. Then we deal with multiplication. 4 times negative 5 would give me negative 20 minus 7. And then I can add and subtract these. So in the end, we would get 25 minus 20 minus 7. And we should get negative 2 as a result. Now sometimes we are going to evaluate expressions that have multiple variables. So in our next example, we are looking at negative 3x squared plus 4x times y minus y cubed. And we're told to evaluate it when x takes on the value 5 and when y takes on the value negative 1. So everywhere there's a y in the expression, we would replace that with negative 1. Everywhere there's an x in the expression, we would replace that with 5. That would give us negative 3 times, okay, x was being squared, so that's 5 squared, plus 4 times x takes on the value 5, y takes on the value negative 1, minus negative 1 cubed. And then we use order of operations to simplify. So I'm going to deal with exponents first, 5 squared is 25. Negative 1 cubed, if you check in your calculator, is negative 1. Next, we can deal with our multiplication of each term. Negative 3 times 25 is negative 75. 4 times 5 times negative 1 is negative 20. Minus a negative does become a positive. Now we just reference our calculator. We have negative 75 minus 20 plus 1 should give us negative 94. Now the next topic that we're going to turn to is how would you simplify algebraic expressions? So we're given an expression, but we could write it in simpler terms. For instance, here, if we distribute the 7 throughout the multiplication and then combine like terms, we'll have an equivalent expression but one that looks a lot more um, simplified. 
So let's go through this process. I'm first going to distribute and multiply. So 7 times 2x's would give me 14x's. 7 times negative 3 is a minus 21. We were subtracting 11x. Now we can group like things. If you have 14x's and you're subtracting 11x's, that would just leave you with 3x's minus 21. And that's our simplified expression because the x and the 21 term cannot combine any further because they're different things. In our next example, we're also asked to simplify. And right off the bat, I see that I've got y getting multiplied by something with multiple terms, so that needs to be distributed, as does the 2. Why don't you take a moment to pause the video now and distribute these throughout as we've kind of started, and then combine like terms, and then unpause to check your work. So then we would get 4x squared y, or you could write it as y times 4x squared, the order inside of multiplication doesn't matter, plus 3xy plus 10x squared, and generally by notation the number comes first, then the x term, then the y term, plus 2x. And we'd ask ourselves, do any of these have anything in common? No, they're all measuring different things. This is an x squared y, whereas this is just an xy. This is an x squared, this is just an x. So these can't combine any further, so we're done simplifying this expression. Now our last example has us simplify the expression, and one thing that we'd want to take note of is we've got this that we could simplify by distributing the minus, then we could simplify the interior, and I'd recommend completely simplifying the interior before we begin to distribute the next term throughout. I recommend you pause the video now and attempt this on your own. Once you've attempted it, unpause to check your work. Now here, I'm first going to distribute the minus. Minus an x gives me a negative x. Minus a negative 2 would actually give me a positive 2. All of that had a 7. The earlier part of the expression has not changed. I'm focusing my effort here at first. Now 7 plus 2 could combine to be a 9, so this would be 9 minus x is what that's equivalent to. And now that I've simplified the interior, it's going to be a lot easier whenever I distribute the 4 throughout. I could have distributed the 4 at this moment, but the likelihood of a mistake using that method would be significantly higher. So simplify the interior first, that's dealing with the parenthesis part of order of operations. 4 goes to each term, so we get 36 minus 4x. All that was being added to 2x. We ask ourselves if we have like terms. We do. We have a 6x and a minus 4x. Think 6x's minus 4x's would give you a positive 2x's plus 36. And these can't simplify any further because they're already um, different things. X's and numbers don't combine past that. And that brings us to the end of these notes. Remember, we do have homework from this section, as with all our sections, from our textbook. I recommend you do the odd problems here and then check your answer in the back of the book. After you do each problem, if you get it correct, move on to the next one. And if there's an error, try to find it and definitely reach out to me via Canvas message or virtual office hours and I'd be happy to help you.